Thank you, Chair Reynoso. I'm Councilmember Ben Kalos. I represent Midtown East, Roosevelt Island, and most notably the Upper East Side and East Harlem, which will be harmed by a marine transfer station which is currently being built from 91st to 93rd Street on the East River. Sanitation costs continue to soar each year, in large part because of the implementation of marine transfer stations. These marine transfer stations, such as the one in my district, do not harm just the public housing, parks, and schools that they're literally placed on top of, but they harm all of New York and all New Yorkers. Because the insidious truth is that the marine transfer stations directly take funds from our budget that could be used to support schools and social services across the city. Last year, I exposed the fact that capital costs for the marine transfer station in my district have quintupled since the program began from $43.9 million in fiscal year 20, 2002 through 2005, $121.8 million from fiscal year 2008 to 2009, $181.6 million in fiscal year 2013-2014, then $215.1 million for fiscal year 14 through 15. The Independent Budget Office showed that the project costs of disposing trash would triple through the 91st Street Marine Transfer Station from $93 a ton to $278 a ton for a cost of $632.5 million over the next 20 years. But don't take their word for it. The preliminary budget before you today estimates that an additional $43 million will be required to dispose of trash in fiscal year 2016, and that is without the 91st and Southwest Brooklyn transfer stations operational yet. We in the City Council have set a goal of making our city sustainable and keeping it intact for the next generation, but the plan that is unfolding continues to rise in cost year after year. In March of last year, your predecessor said to this committee that the cost of the MTS at 91st was $190 million. A few months later, that figure was adjusted up to $215.1 million. Uh, you have listed $215.1 million as the projected cost today. Do you anticipate that that number to rise again a few months from now, or is that the number you're sticking with through the final budget hearing? Um, I don't think that we've changed our number uh, since I testified last year. Um, I do anticipate that there will be change orders on this MTS due to the fact that there have been delays, particularly around uh, accommodations we have made to Asphalt Green around summer camp um, and other issues that they have had that I know that I'm sure will cost money. Um, in addition, I know that I've requested numerous studies by the engineering firm to look at a variety of different ramps before the 92nd Street ramp. I have not seen all of those change orders, but I assume that those will be included. Thank you for making the accommodations for the Asphalt Green Summer Camp. Uh, they serve over 35,000 uh, children, and to the extent that 91st Street is a street that bisects Asphalt Green so that you have the, the Aqua Center on one side and the field as well as uh, children's uh, play area on the other. I know a lot of people in my district, uh, while I firmly oppose the marine transfer station, are eagerly awaiting the results of the study. What locations are currently being uh, studied for other ramps, and uh, when do you estimate that those uh, will come out? So the one that uh, the community settled on, I actually asked to make sure that uh, there was some consistency, so Asphalt Green Pledge to Protect and NYCHA sent me a letter some time ago saying that they all agreed that we should look and evaluate a ramp that landed at 92nd Street and York Avenue. So that is what we are in the process of doing. And as I previously testified, I anticipate that in the next few weeks, all of that work will be completed um, so that we can make a decision. Has anyone looked at a, a ramp, perhaps, uh, with the mayor's commitment to environmental justice that we could just bisect uh, Gracie Mansion, which is adjacent to the Marine Transfer Station, and just run the ramp through Gracie Mansion and uh, up to the MTS in order to completely go around and farther away from uh, our, our NYCHA developments and Asphalt Green and other parts of the community? That was actually one of the ideas we came up with to come down New York right next to Gracie, and that actually was rejected by the community. Thank you. Uh, with regard to capacity, uh, my understanding is that this marine transfer station will have capacity of about 5,000 uh, tons uh, as built. How much capacity are you intending to use for 
Department of Sanitation, how much for commercial trucks, uh, what will the subsidy be to commercial trucks, and will you pledge not to increase capacity beyond uh, what you state So that, today? I think that's a weekly number, because our daily uh, permit capacity is 1,644. Um, so our average throughput for DSNY is likely to be around 570, 580 tons per day. That does vary after snow. I peak around 40 percent higher after a snowstorm in terms of the amount that we're picking up. Um, we are permitted for 780 tons per day of commercial, and that is noise constrained, um, which means they can only enter the facility in the evening, and that's why it's not more vehicles. Uh, well, we, we do not intend, and I do commit to not try and change what my permit requirements are unless there's an emergency or upset exactly as the permit is written now. I am not trying to increase that facility. So, so the permitted capacity is 780 commercial. What is the permitted capacity for residential? Uh, 900, 870, something like that. I'm doing the math in my head. And just to, again, you will not apply to increase you or a, a or somebody else at DSNY in the future will not be applying to increase the permanent capacity. Um, no, we do not intend to increase the capacity. We do have emergency. The capacity is an average day. There's also emergency days, and so it really ends up being a weekly permit. So, what we have now is what we intend to stay with. With regard to evenings, uh, what does that mean? What time does the evening start by your definition? What time does it end? Are we looking at getting commercial trucks every night starting at 4 o'clock and going till 8 a.m. the next day? So, so the evening is 8 to 8. So from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., we will have garbage trucks uh, coursing through all of Manhattan. And, and there is possibility that that would all change during winter's time. I mean, like, there were days that we did 7 to 7 shifts um, for weeks at a time, and we were picking up refuse or recycling on the overnight or on the day, the post day, and it really depended on when the storm hit. And uh, what will be the subsidy for commercial uh, trucking to use the facility? We really have not made a determination of what we are charging the commercial. I want to actually finish building the facility and then start operating it before we're even thinking about what's going to happen with commercial vehicles. Hopefully you will never have to make that decision. Uh, with regard to the fiscal year 16 draft report, it indicates that four marine transfer stations required under the swamp are adding $43 million to the cost of exporting our city's trash. Does this include 91st Street and Southwest Brooklyn? Um, it, it includes a partial for Southwest and Hamilton and 91st Street. I anticipate that we are actually in the process right now of rebidding both Southwest and Hamilton. Um, so having a number, a total number of how much the marine transfer stations will cost on the contract side is really not knowable at this moment. I don't think we've even, we have received the technical and cost, but I believe that, you know, you're not permitted to open the cost until you've made a determination on the technical. Uh, so I don't believe that those cost figures have even been opened yet. Do you, do you anticipate that the costs will go up once those uh, locations are operational? I remain optimistic. That we can open new marine transfer stations without costs going up? Without significant cost increases, yes. I, I respectfully disagree. Uh, with regard to the Independent Budget Office, they issued a report that I referenced earlier that the Marine Transfer Station in my district would triple waste disposal costs to a total of $600 million over the next 20 years. Have you read the report? No, I have not. Would you, would you commit to reading the, the report from the Independent Budget Office? That no, I, I, did, I, I know what my costs are, and I understand, and, I, and as I, I testified before, the Solid Waste Management Plan is a very expensive choice, and it's a choice that was made because of the fact that there were certain neighborhoods that historically had taken more refuse, and in order for there to be a vision of borough equity, there were very, very expensive decisions made and very expensive contracts signed for long durations. So the fact that it's very expensive is not surprising. 
you, you bring up borough equity. Does any residential waste from Manhattan go to any other borough? No. So how does redirecting waste uh, from New Jersey to Manhattan provide help borough equity? So the question on the solid waste management plan, which is a holistic plan, which required the council to vote on it and which required the state to approve is a whole plan. No piece of it was looked at independently of any other piece. So you can't pull out just 91st Street and talk about 91st Street. You have to talk about the whole plan. And let me just be clear. Newark is not necessarily always thrilled to have us bringing material to them. Um, they have reached out through the EPA to ask that we reduce truck traffic from New York to New Jersey. Um, so this is a long-term plan that's being invested in um, by the city of New York, and it, it was an expensive choice. So along that line, are you familiar with Rube Goldberg? I'm sorry, who, Ruth? Rube Goldberg, he designed yeah, so Rube a- Rube Goldberg solution, yes, I've, so I am. And ju just to confirm uh, the truck route. So a truck will drive from Chelsea on the west side through residential neighborhoods throughout Manhattan to 91st Street on the east side to a marine transfer station where garbage will be tipped, then shoveled into a compactor then loaded into an intermodal shipping container, then loaded onto a barge, then barged to Staten Island, then transferred to rail car, then transferred from rail car back onto a truck, then to a landfill or waste energy incinerator in New Jersey, New York, or uh, down south. Is that correct? Did I miss any steps? No, that's correct. And that is easier and more environmentally friendly than driving a truck in Chelsea into a tunnel in Chelsea to New Jersey and then back? Uh, those vehicles don't go to the Essex facility. Uh, where, where do they go? I think they're going to IWS. They're going to IWS in New Jersey. So, so at IWS and in New Jersey, do trucks transport from the, the intermodal facility to, from the rail car yard or whatnot to, to the, the waste station, or do they land straight at the uh, waste facility? And is it waste Truck, energy? They get, they get driven by DSNY employees to the facilities in New Jersey, uh, and in, I'm, there's, you're absolutely right. That is the way that this decision was made. So one of the great things about this knew. administration is that we've, we've, we've overturned so many bad decisions from the previous administration. The previous administration believes in stop and frisk. I don't. We don't. It stopped. We're done. Uh, the, the city is healing again. Don't we have a chance here to say, hey, that was a really bad idea, and uh, we, we have an opportunity to do something better? So I think that as we've discussed, the administration remains firmly committed to the solid waste management plan. So the Community District 5, Midtown, Community District 6, East Side and East Midtown, Community District 8, Upper East Side, and Community District 11, East Harlem will be served by the Marine Transfer Station in my district. Correct. Uh, are you aware that according to the New York City Department of Health, East Harlem and the Upper East Side have the worst air quality of anywhere other, it's worse than Brooklyn, Queens, Staten Island, or even the South Bronx? I know that they have a hot spot on air quality, so the two things that I would say is this administration made a commitment to extend the clean, clean heat initiative aggressively on the Upper East Side. Um, one, of the, one of the causes of poor air pollution has been the use of number six heating oil. Mm -hmm. um, and so there were changes made to rules to have that be phased out, and the mayor's office has worked to make it so those buildings on the Upper East Side are moving even more quickly. And as I testified before, we actually won an award last year um, from Green Fleet Magazine because we run one of the cleanest fleets uh, in the entire country. Are you aware that East Harlem has and one of the- I just wanted to be yeah, as respectful yeah. as possible to the, all the council members, so I didn't put a clock, but- I, uh, Absolutely, I'm just going to use as much time as my predecessor, Council Member Matteo, had, That which, did not happen, Ben, and you continue to do this. Don't, so you don't need to do I, that, I, Ben, okay? I, I'd like to just finish. I, I, I realize, folks, 
may, may wish to send their trash to, to my district, even though it's not really going to go from your district to my district. I'd just like to finish the questions and have the same opportunities that my colleagues did. You did, so, Ben. You had the same opportunities, and I, this is your last question, and then I need to move on so the rest of the committee could speak. Uh, do residents of NYCHA developments at 92nd, 93rd, 94th, 98th, 99th, and 100th uh, breathe the same air as will be polluted by the Marine Transfer Station and trucks uh, going there at 91st and 93rd? Um, my trucks are not part of the pollution. No issue. pollution from your trucks whatsoever. They're at zero percent. Actually, Mack Truck would say that the air that comes out of the tailpipe is cleaner than the air that goes in. What, what would you say? So you're saying that we can drive hundreds of trucks through East Harlem, through NYCHA developments, past them, and there will be no impact on air quality? We do not anticipate that there, as the CEQRA analysis found, that there will be air quality impacts. Thank you for your questions, uh, Councilmember Kalos. I would like to now